Well, good morning. morning. And isn't it a glorious day here in the Rose Garden? To members of the cabinet, leaders in faith and public life, to all our distinguished guests, it's an honor for Karen and me to be here with all of you as we mark this National Day of Prayer here at the White House. The Bible tells us to persevere in prayer, that the prayer of the upright pleases him, and that in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, we're to present our requests to God. And the American people do this every day. You know, the sweetest words the President and I ever hear are the words, I'm praying for you. And we hear it a lot. But that's really nothing new. The American people believe in prayer, always have. Prayer is the cord that runs through every era of America's history. In 1775, the Second Continental Congress established a day of fasting and prayer. In 1863, President Abraham Lincoln urged Americans to pray so that in his words, the united cry of the nation will be heard on high and answered with blessing. And in 1952, President Harry Truman and the Congress formally established this National Day of Prayer, a time set aside each year for the American people to turn to God in prayer and meditation. To celebrate this day, last year, President Trump gathered faith leaders across what he would call this nation of faith, including many of you here today. And in that moment, he took decisive action to ensure, in his words, that the federal government will never, ever penalize any person for their religious beliefs again. Today, President Trump will take another strong step to protect and promote Americans of faith, because in this White House, Believers of every background have a champion in President Donald Trump. But in these two divided times, what we'll most importantly do today is to pause and to pray. In gatherings large and small all across this nation, Americans will bow the head and bend the knee and pray for this great country. And when we pray, we'll pray with confidence. Confidence in the great people of this nation. Confidence in our values. And confidence that just as he has always done through the long and storied history of this nation, he will once again hear from heaven and heal this land, this one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now I have the privilege to share a verse today, as many others will. You know, over the mantle of our home for nearly 20 years has been a Bible verse that speaks of a promise our little family has claimed and Americans have cherished through the generations. In Jeremiah 29, verse 11, we read, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. To Americans near and far, thank you for joining us in this National Day of Prayer. And God bless you all.
Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning and we praise you for your goodness and blessings which you have poured out into this country. We know it is far more than we deserve. We thank you for a president and a vice president who understand the importance of prayer. And we pray for their precious families who have made great sacrifices to serve alongside them. We pray for them and all of our nation's leaders that you would give them your wisdom to know what is right and then give them the courage to do it. And they, may they remember you and you alone are the hope for this country. Your scripture says, there is a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. And Lord, we pray for a time of mending and unity in this country. We pray for a time to turn away from hate and choose to love one another despite our differences. And we pray for a time of peace. We know by your scriptures, your son Jesus is the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. Let the peace of love of God rule in our hearts. And may we remember that peace and love is from him who is, who was, and who is to come. And as my little girl reminds me each morning when I rise, this is the day the Lord has made. May we rejoice and be glad in it. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Namaste. My salutations to all of you. All of us are divine. I bow to the divinity in all of you. May I begin with Om Sri Ganesha Yanamaha. My humble salutations to the most auspicious Ganesha, who is the remote of all obstacles. Next, my salutations to the all pervasive Vasudeva Vishnu in all his ten incarnations. All the rulers of the world are his representatives. May Indra, the ruler of the all gods, bring success to the whole of the mankind. May the God bless all the leaders, the lawmakers, with the finest insight in favor of mankind. May the God bless the protector of the good, and remove the evil, and give safety to all. May the God of intellect bestow wisdom and happiness to the whole mankind. May all be prosperous and happy. May all be free from illness. May all see what is spiritual uplifting. May no one suffers. Om, peace, peace, peace. Our loving, gracious, and perfect Father in heaven, we approach thee in gratitude for the many blessings received at thy hands. On this national day of prayer, we unite to acknowledge that all good gifts come from thee. This nation has been given relative peace and prosperity, and we humbly ask thee to watch over those who are in harm's way, protecting our freedoms in the pursuit of happiness. Bless those who lead this great nation with the empathy, insights, and inspiration they need as they counsel together and sincerely strive to work in harmony. Help us in our quest that we may be joined together in the same mind 
and in the same judgment. May each exercise integrity, humility, and nobility of character in his or her sphere of influence. Heavenly Father, many are in need, and we pray for all who are working unselfishly to improve lives. May we become a land of good Samaritans, laboring in love to lift the hands of the downtrodden, the oppressed, and the afflicted, knit our hearts together in unity and in love, one towards another. Please strengthen homes and families which provide loving guidance in building capable and compassionate citizens. We also recognize the need to improve, Father. Help us to find ways to understand and value one another, to work together in cooperation and selflessness rather than seek for personal grain, to satisfy vain ambitions, or to gratify pride. May we examine ourselves and become better individuals, thereby increasing the peace and happiness of each citizen in this United States of America. Dear Father, we thank thee for every blessing and humbly ask for thy help as well as for thy continued care and keeping. In the sacred name of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, amen. Good morning. Unique God of all, the one God who transcends all cultures and differences, yet experienced uniquely by all. Marvelous is your being, excellent is your work, and powerful is your name. We pause this moment as a grateful nation to acknowledge you praise and thank you for your many blessings on our country, our families and loved ones. We pray for your continuous blessings upon this nation for generations to come. God, we pray for the president, the vice president, our national and military leaders, that you continue to support, protect, and guide them in the many challenges confronting our nation. God, we beseech you, Almighty, to grant them patience in adversity joy in service, and selflessness in leadership. Finally, God, we pray for our soldiers, our sailors, our Marines, our Coast Guardsmen, our police, who are serving in harm's way, and those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, serving the cause of a grateful nation. God, we lift up their families to you for your blessings and grace. All of this I pray in your precious name, amen. Our Father in heaven, <clears throat> the one and only God, creator and giver of life to all things upon the heavens and the earth, please grant us life and good health and bestow upon us peace, prosperity, moral strength, and understanding. Bless the president and the first lady, the vice president and Mrs. Pence, the administration and all the nation's leaders, that they may lead us in a way which will please you and fulfill your will and earn us continued blessing upon our great nation. As the words of the Almighty to King Solomon in Chronicles 2, words remembered so often at events like this one and across the nation about when his people, Israel, will turn back to him in difficult times, he said, I will heal their land now my eyes will be open and my ears will hearken to the prayers of this place. The place of which God spoke then, over 2,000 years ago, was the sanctuary in the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. The Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem M. Schneerson of Sacred Memory, teaches us that even today in the diaspora, and as that temple is no more, the timeless message endures that we all have the challenge and the ability. We can, and therefore we must, create within our hearts and our own lives, if even a small sanctuary where the Almighty can dwell, and through that, help bring more light, love, goodness, and kindness to so many people as we might merit. Prayer is a serious thing, as it offers the greatest or simplest person, even a child, 
or perhaps especially a child, a path to communicate directly with he who has created us all. It also reminds us as a nation that faith in our creator and his guidelines which illuminate our path in life are the glue which ultimately holds us all together as a just society. We remember on this special day in the Jewish calendar, Lag Baomer, the great sage Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai the Rajbi, who brought so much love, inner meaning, and teachings to life's journey and inspired us to embrace the world we live in with mutual respect and work to make it better and more heavenly every day. So on this day, dear God, as we turn to you in prayer, please countenance the sanctuary we build in our lives as we serve only you and with your kind open eyes and ears which hearken to the prayers of the place we are, please do heal this land, our land. Let us see and share with humility the great sparkle of our nation which is called by your name, as with liberty and justice for all we are, indeed, one nation under you, God, indivisible. And so we need your help and guidance today and every day as we must navigate forward together in the choppy waters of our world and our times. Let us merit very soon the day for which we have been praying for so long, when we'll, you will finally bring understanding, healing, peace, and redemption for all of mankind with the arrival of Mashiach, our righteous Messiah. As a Jew, so mindful of my forebears and their tribulations, I am deeply grateful to the President for this invitation and for the opportunity this gives me to publicly offer this prayer freely from my heart and according to my own faith. God bless America and all those who agree, bearing in mind, of course, the men and women serving in our military, stateside and abroad at the tip of the spear. Let us bless them all, pray for them, and all who agree, please say, Amen. Let, <clears throat> let us pray, Almighty God, good and gracious Father, with confidence we take up the challenge of St. Paul, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. We turn to you, Lord, in humble but fervent petition. Give us the grace to root out from our hearts anything that would hold us back from walking in the full blessing of your spirit and in the bond of unity that is the gift you give to all of your children. O oh God, fill our hearts, we pray, with the fire of your love. Kindle in all of us a desire for the just advancement of all our neighbors, that through the good things which you richly bestow upon all of us, each person may be brought to fulfillment, every division be removed, and equality and justice be established for all. We ask you now on this national day of prayer to give us the strength of mind and heart to always stand for freedom. Give us the courage to make our voices heard on behalf of all people who suffer persecution. We ask you, Father of light, wisdom, and justice, through whom authority is rightly administered, laws are enacted, and judgment decreed. Assist with your Holy Spirit of counsel and fortitude, the President of the United States. May his administration be one of wisdom and justice. And let the light of your divine wisdom direct the deliberations of Congress. Shine forth in the proceedings and laws framed for our government. And may, may we witness the promotion of national happiness, an increase of prosperity, peace, and right judgment. Grant this, we pray, Heavenly Father, that for the sake of our children and their children and all who come after us, this great land might always be one nation under God, 
indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And this prayer we make in the holy name of your Son and our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Please, thank you very much. What a day. What a beautiful day. And our country is doing very well. You'll see some very good announcements very shortly. It's wonderful to be here on this glorious spring morning as we celebrate the National Day of Prayer at the White House in the Rose Garden. I want to thank Vice President Mike Pence and Karen for joining us. Very special people. Thank you very much. We are truly blessed to have a Vice President and a Second Lady who believe in the power of prayer and the glory of God. And they do believe. I'm with them a lot. They believe. So, thank you, Mike. Thanks also to the members of the Cabinet who have joined us today, along with so many amazing faith leaders from across the country, including my good friend, Paula White, who's done such an incredible job. Paula? Paula? Stand, Paula. Thank you, Paula. And the President of the National Day of Prayer, Dr. Ronnie Floyd. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thanks, Ronnie. I especially want to recognize Sissy Graham, and I will now add that word Lynch because I always call her for Sissy Graham, but it's really Sissy Graham Lynch. You like it that way better, right? Don't you think we? I like it that way too. I like it that way because you're married to a great gentleman, a fantastic man. So, Sissy, thank you very much for being here. We appreciate it very much. <laughs> Priest Narayana Char, Sister Bingham. Chaplain Agbera, Rabbi Shemtov, Cardinal Whirl, and the Hope Christian Church Choir. I heard you, by the way, right inside the Oval Office. That was beautiful. That was great music. Thank you. Thank you very much. As we gather this morning, our thoughts also turn to the memory of a man who awakened the light of God in the hearts of millions of America's pastors, and that's the great, legendary, wonderful Billy Graham. Great, great man. Great. So, Sissy, I want to thank you for carrying on your grandfather's incredible, towering legacy. Today, we remember the words of Reverend Graham. Prayer is the key that opens us the treasures of God's mercies and blessings. Always beautiful. And when he said it, it meant so much. When I say it, it means something, but I liked when he said it better. <laughs> right? I think he did that a little better than I do. Reverend Graham's words remind us that prayer has always been at the center of American life because America is a nation of believers. Right? The prayers of religious believers helped gain our independence, and the prayers of religious leaders like the Reverend Martin Luther King, great man, helped win the long struggle for civil rights. Faith has shaped our families, and it shaped our communities. It's inspired our commitment to charity and our defense of liberty. 
and faith has forged the identity and the destiny of this great nation that we all love. Americans of faith have built the hospitals that care for our sick, the homes that tend to our elderly, and the charities that house the orphaned. I'm the minister, and they really do. They minister to the poor and so beautifully and with such love. We are proud of our religious heritage. And as President, I will always protect religious liberty. We've been doing it. We've been doing it. Last year on this day, I took executive action to prevent the Johnson Amendment, a disaster, from interfering with our First Amendment rights. I was so proud of that. I've been saying from the beginning, you know that. I was saying for a long time, we're going to do that. Across the government, we have taken action to defend the religious conscience of doctors, nurses, teachers, students, and groups like the Little Sisters of the Poor. In January of this year, I was proud to be the first President to stand here in the Rose Garden to address the March for Life. A very special day. And my administration has spoken out against religious persecution around the world, including the persecution of many, many Christians. What's going on is horrible. And we're taking action. We are taking action. We condemn all crimes against people of faith. And today, we are launching another historic action to promote religious freedom. I will soon be signing an executive order to create a faith initiative at the White House. The faith — thank you very much. The Faith Initiative will help design new policies that recognize the vital role of faith in our families, our communities, and our great country. This office will also help ensure that faith-based organizations have equal access to government funding and the equal right to exercise their deeply held beliefs. We take this step because we know that in solving the many, many problems and our great challenges, faith is more powerful than government, and nothing is more powerful than God. With us today is a living reminder of this truth. His name is John Ponder from Las Vegas, Nevada. Where's John? Come on up here, John. Get up here, John. John grew up without his father. As he tells it, my mother was strong, but she wasn't able to keep us out of the gangs and off the streets, right? John was in and out of jail for years until, at age 38, he was arrested for bank robbery. You don't look like a bank robber, John. It's <laughs> come a long way. John soon ended up in federal prison, relegated to solitary confinement. That's where God found him. John began to read the Bible and listen to Christian radio, right? Yes, sir. So incredible. Thank you. Incredible. One morning at 2 a.m., he woke up to the voice of the great Billy Graham. Reverend Graham's words came through the airways. Jesus wants to be Lord of your life. That night, John dedicated his life to Christ. He spent the rest of his time in prison praying, studying the Bible, 
and bringing the Lord to his fellow inmates. The day after John's release, a visitor knocked on his door. It was the man who put him in jail, FBI Special Agent Richard Beasley. Who's here? Richard? Come on up, Richard. I want you to know that I've been praying for you very strongly. He said that. God called me to the FBI in part because of you, John. The two are now lifelong friends. John, do you like him? I love him. Oh, you love him? <laughs> That's nice. That's beautiful. John runs a ministry that has helped more than 2,000 former inmates rejoin society, and he's the talk of the country. The job John does is incredible. John and Richard, you are a living testament to the power of prayer. Your story reminds us that prayer changes hearts and transforms lives. It uplifts the soul, inspires action, and unites us all as one nation under God. So important. And we say it here, you know? A lot of people, they don't say it. But you know what? They're starting to say it more, just like we're starting to say Merry Christmas when that day comes around. You notice the big difference between now and two or three years ago? It was, Paula, it was going in the other direction rapidly, right? Now it's straight up. Our country was founded on prayer. Our communities are sustained by prayer. And our nation will be renewed by hard work, a lot of intelligence, and prayer. Today, we gather to remember this truth. We thank God for the faith of our people. We praise God for the blessings of freedom. And we ask God to forever bless this magnificent land that we all love so much, America. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless the United States. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thank you. He's a big signing. We're joining Come on up, folks. Come on up. Jack Graham. Thank you. Yes. See you again. See you, Jack. Come on, Mike. Wow, what a what a group, huh? It's a big, don't worry, the collapse is rolling on down one. That's great. This is a good one. Couldn't we get some more people? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Come on up. This is history. This is history. Come on up. That's fantastic. Hey. Thank you very much, everybody. It's a great day. Thank you. Thank you.